time now is 9.30. We'll call the meeting of the Mill Creek Township Board of Supervisors of July the 12th, 2016. We'll call it to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll start with uh, item number three, public comment on agenda items other than the development or rezoning applications. Any public comment? Being none, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, just for just a note for the record here, uh, there are no minutes from our previous meeting uh, due to some, uh, some issues. Uh, at the time, we will have them for our next meeting coming up in two weeks. Uh, item number four is approval of the bills for the past two weeks. Any questions, corrections, or anything like that that we need to talk about? I'll move approval of the bills. Okay, do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. <coughs> and we're going to go on to item number five, administration of oath of office for our new assistant fire code official and emergency management coordinator. So if you would, uh, Mr. Caleb Dixon, please come forward. And I think you have your family with you too? Yes. Would they like to come forward too while we administer the oath? You're more than welcome. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you want to, please do. Would you like the microphone, too? Yeah. Sure. Oh, good. Wonderful. All right. Okay. Caleb, let's go over here. Is this an area right here? Now, of course, there's our cameras. We want to put you on camera. This is a child there, too. Okay. If you would, please raise your right hand. Repeat after me as I read the sentences. I, Caleb T. Dixon. I, Caleb T. Dixon, do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the Commonwealth, and that I will discharge the duties of Fire Inspector, Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator, in the Mill Creek Township, Erie County, with fidelity. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Did you get the baby smiling too? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now he's looking at me. Sorry, <laughs> my fault. Hey, little guy. Come on over here. There we go. Hi. There we go. How you doing? Oh, he looks good. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. How old is he? About a year. Eight months. Eight months. He's a baby. Yeah. He's a good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just for the public, in case they want to know, uh, we have seen the need in the in, in the last several months, maybe a year or so, uh, for an assistant to uh, to help uh, Matt actually as fire code official with the many duties that he has. Uh, and I believe uh, you know, Caleb's going to be a great uh, fit into this department. So he brings a lot of professional experience to the job, and uh, we welcome him aboard here. Hopefully, here for a long career at Mill Creek Township. Okay, moving on. Um, Item number six, uh, announcement of bids and quotations received. Uh, Mr. Morgan, I think you have this one. Uh, yes, um, and as, we, as we know, uh, Mr. Dare will be retiring uh, this summer as our township solicitor. Um, township is looking to hire a, a law firm uh, to, be, to act as township solicitor. Uh, we did uh, publicly advertise requests for proposals. Um, the opening of those proposals was this past Friday, July 7th at 3 p.m. We did have uh, four submittals. Um, that would be uh, Robert Ward Esquire, 
uh, the firm of Sterrett and Mott, the McDonald Illich firm, and the Quinn firm all submitted proposals. Um, we're not required to, to go through a bidding process, but we wanted to make sure we had a, a very public and transparent selection process uh, uh, for this contract. Um, the plan now is for the Board of Supervisors to review those proposals and have a selection by our next meeting, which would be uh, July 26th, I believe. That's correct, yeah, night meeting, yes. Okay, anything else on that there? That's, that's all. That's all we have comment for. Okay, thank you, John. Um, let's see here. Item number seven, which is a proposed ordinance 2016-9. Uh, it's a Mill Creek Township Sewer Authority bond issue. Uh, I have Mr. Nick Valjone from PNC. Morning. Would you come up to the podium? Please identify yourself, I, although I just did, but uh, if you would. And, uh, you, and your role in this uh, ordinance here. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Again, my name is Nick Valjone with PNC Capital Markets. Uh, we are uh, proposing to be the underwriter for the Mill Creek Township Sewer Authorities refunding bond issue, which is um, in the ordinance that's being under consideration this morning. We did prepare a um, short one-page summary of the transaction. If you have any questions that I go through it or afterwards, um, please ask and I'll try to field them as best as I can. Okay. Um, the transaction that we're proposing this morning is a partial refunding of the Sewer Authority's 2011 bonds. The refunding is being done for savings and those savings are being realized as a capital project. So essentially the authority will be able to undertake a capital project the savings from this financing. Uh, it'll be a savings after cost of roughly three hundred fifty to $400,000. Uh, mm -hmm. The market's been very good after uh, the Brexit uh, and the bond market has helped us a lot in lowering rates. Okay. The transaction currently is a bit over $8 million. The ordinance has eight and a half million. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is to give us enough room if rates go um, down further, we have more savings, we can deliver those savings to the authority. Um, the bond sale is scheduled for July 27th, pending your approval today and also the authorities in a few weeks. Okay. Uh, we would close that issue on um, late August, August 24th, which time the savings will be delivered to the authority and they can be in, the, in their capital project. On the right-hand side of the chart that um, we provided there, you see basically the savings are all taken to closing, um, which will be delivered on August 24th. The things that are notable here is the old bonds have a rate of about 4.1 percent, yeah. the new debt be about two and a quarter, and that's the reason for the savings. Okay. So um, I'll that's turn it over to Attorney Walker to talk okay. about the ordinance. Um, okay. These bonds be guaranteed by the township as they were before, right. uh, back by the sewer. Okay, appreciate your presentation. Yes, any any you. questions on the board? Anybody? John? Brian? No, nope. thank you. Okay, I think we're all set. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nick. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. I am Tim Wachter. My firm, Knox McLaughlin, serves as bond counsel for this deal. Mm -hmm. um, we are here to discuss the proposed ordinance 2016-9 in which you would be approving the guarantee and the issuance of the eight and a half million dollar guaranteed sewer revenue bond um, for the purposes expressed by Nick, uh, mm -hmm. not only to re partially refund the 2011 issue, but also to finance additions and improvements to the sewer system, including but not limited to the Route 8 project phase two, the Wolf Road pump station improvement project, and to pay the cost of issuance and insuring of the bonds. Um, I believe that everyone has received a copy of the ordinance and has reviewed that. I'll give you a brief summary for that. Um, the estimated cost of the project uh, uh, that is not related to the refunding is, th is $340,000. Uh, these projects previously identified do have a useful life uh, in excess of 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose of the issuance is to reduce debt savings. Mm -hmm. Uh, re reduce debt service and produce savings and to advance refund a portion of the bonds. Um, the authority is going to be uh, executing a resolution in the coming weeks through which it, it is going to pledge its rents, revenues and receipts um, mm -hmm. from the sewer system in order to make sure that the bonds are paid for. However, this ordinance is going to authorize a guarantee from the township through which the township will uh, guarantee the debt payments in the event that the authority is unable to do so. Mm -hmm. And through that guarantee, you are pledging your full faith and credit and taxing power. Uh, the terms and conditions uh, through this are the same as we have uh, engaged in in the past through the guarantee of the 2011 bonds. Mm -hmm. um, we are, through this ordinance, uh, noting that we are going to ensure that we take actions that will prevent these bonds to become arbitrage bonds, meaning that you would earn interest on those bonds in excess um, of uh, the rate itself. Um, you agree to undertake the necessary continuing disclosures mm -hmm. obligations. You'll be hiring 
the Digital Assurance uh, Certification as the Authorities Disclosure Dissemination Agent in order to make the required uh, filings. Uh, and I believe that that hiring of DAC, as it's called, is going to be paid for by the authority. Attached with that ordinance is a form of the guarantee agreement uh, that would be executed at such point that we have a closing. There is also going to be the issuance of an eighth supplemental lease uh, with respect to the operation of the system that will have a closing as well. Um, upon passage of the ordinance, I do have copies of the application to the Department of Community and Economic Development for the Local Government Unit Debt Act approval. I have a copy of the required debt statement that is necessary to be filed uh, with that application. And there is an obligation agreement that has been prepared by uh, Solicitor Adair uh, to assist the township through its uh, operations of this financing. Okay. I can go into any further detail that you like. However, I promise not to put you to sleep. So please <laughs> let me know if you have any questions. Okay. I do have a question for you, if I can start here. Uh, just for clarification purposes, uh, and maybe just so the audience and anybody that may be viewing this uh, understands, this is not an increase of a debt uh, that's going to be incurred by the sewer authority nor is it by the township. It is something that we're actually reducing the debt. And this is really nothing new. This is just a, re, uh, a renewed uh, bond. Right. So the, um, as Nick had uh, explained, yeah. the issuance is going to reduce the overall debt service payments right. for the authority. Right. What the township is doing is merely guaranteeing those payments. Which, which, in, which yeah. in, we're obligated by law Which anyway. enhances the, op the, right. um, the issuance for the authority and makes it a, uh, we'll say, a more attractive uh, financing deal for sure. them because of the pledge of the tax and guarantee of the township. Right. Now in Pennsylvania, uh, municipalities such as the township are limited in the amount of debt exposure that they can um, enter into by the Pennsylvania Constitution. Right. Uh, that is known as your municipal debt limit. Mm -hmm. This itself is lease rental debt, mm -hmm. um, which means that the funds from the operation of the sewer authority um, and through the sewer department are sufficient to cover the debt service payments. So this is known as an exclusion to your debt limitation. And so by doing this guarantee and upon receipt of approval from the Department of Community and Economic Development, this will not impact or should not impact the debt limitations that you okay. have. Okay, that's, that's what I was looking for right there. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. So this Walker. will not um, harm yeah. your future ability right. to incur other debt um, due to the yeah. debt limitations. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, as we know, this can be a little bit confusing for the average person in the audience or the public that, you know, what is this all about? Is the township increasing their debt? No, that's not happening. No, so. that is not what's okay. happening. Yeah, We're required you. to go through, through these approvals because of the guarantee, mm -hmm. but your, the township itself is not incurring any debt, and okay. this action through the lease rental debt exclusion should not be um, okay. affecting your debt obligate, your debt maximums pursuant to the Pennsylvania Constitution. Okay. Any questions from the board? Anybody else here? Okay. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, I want to thank, thank uh, you and, uh, and Nick Fell Joan and uh, Evan for all the work that you guys have done. And of course, the Sewer Authority too, which uh, started this uh, or started this action there. So my hats off to them too. So. A good financial move. Thank yes, you. Yes, very thank good. You. We'll, we'll stick around, um, and after your action, should it be affirmative, we'll have some paperwork for you to sign. <laughs> okay. Thank Sounds you. great. There. If I could, this is yes, actually yes, a multi-part thing. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend adoption of Ordinance 2016-9, mm -hmm. and then I would recommend approval of the agreement between the township and the authority that Attorney Walker okay. referred to. I would also note that the guarantee agreement, which in the past has often been approved at this meeting, is being authorized and approved by the ordinance, and it and all these other forms that were mentioned will be prepared, and usually they're signed by the township in advance of the actual closing. Okay. Okay, so you're asking for two uh, separate actions there, Evan? Yes. One is the, uh, the ordinance itself, and then, of course, the guarantee agreement. So. No, no. Oh. No, the guarantee agreement w will be later. This okay. Is the yeah. agreement between the township oh, yeah, and the and authority. Any authority. Any authority. Yeah, the okay. Ordinance. Okay, I got you there. Thank you. Okay. I'll move approval of ordinance 2016-9. Okay, do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. And then I'll move uh, approval of the agreement between the township and the sewer authority. Okay, we'll hear a second on that. I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Okay, so we've taken care of those two <coughs> things. Thank you. Okay, um, item number eight, uh, financial township, or township financial aid engagement, audit engagement letter. Mark. Yes, uh, we've received from uh, Felix and Gleckler, uh, the, our external auditors for the past two years, a 
their engagement letter for the 2016 audit. Uh, the price that they are willing to do the audit for has not increased year over year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would uh, ask the approval for, of the uh, engagement of Felix and Gleckler. Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually not a great idea to keep switching auditors year after year. Right. Uh, so therefore, this would be a third year in a row where uh, we would use them. Mm -hmm. uh, periodically, we should uh, get an RFP, but uh, okay. not before at least three years. It, okay, so we can go maybe this year and then next year, maybe a fifth year, but then look at something else. Just, just to make sure that we're getting a good price. Yeah. And uh, press eyes. Press press eyes, eyes yeah, too. that always yeah. helps there. Okay, and that's your professional advice and being in the yes. financial background there too, so we appreciate that. But I hear a, a motion to approve that, the, that engagement letter. I'll move approval. Okay, do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay, Mr. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. And Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? Uh, I vote yes, and I just want to make sure the board, you know, I, I appreciate Mark's recommendation that perhaps next year we actually issue an RFP yep. uh, to see what kind of services are out there. Uh, I think it makes a lot, a lot of sense, so Mark, thank you very much. Okay. okay. Okay, and I also vote yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number nine, uh, action to advertise for receipt of bids in regards to sale of township owned property. Mr. Morgan, I'll let you handle that one. Well, this is the uh, property you commonly call the Lori property uh, that the township acquired, uh, how, how long ago, Evan? About two years ago. Two years ago um, for the purpose of, of preserving the lien of uh, the property uh, has been cleaned up uh, by uh, by Mill Creek Township. We've addressed uh, some issues regarding uh, parcel lines, um, and now the, the property is ready to be put back on the market. So this is uh, really an action for us to go out for bids for the property to recoup the costs uh, that we incurred for acquisition and, and, and cleanup of the of the property. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, make a motion to approve uh, the action to advertise for receipt of bids. Uh, regarding the sale of 1330 Coons Road. Okay. Do I hear a second on that motion? A second. Okay. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote on that? I vote yes. Mr. McGrath? I yes. Vote. And I also vote yes. Mr. Chairman, I'd also comment um, once the bids are received, um, whatever the, the winning bid is, um, uh, if there's, if we recoup our costs, I would say whatever additional proceeds we get from this sale, I'd like for us to consider uh, utilizing those funds for, for similar purposes in the future. I think, although this was done to preserve a lien, I think the, the township is in a, a bit of a tipping point now when it comes to uh, blight remediation, that yes. we should have a focused strategy, and uh, if sure. these proceeds are appropriate, we might yeah. uh, be able to create some kind of revolving fund for us to begin cleaning up blight structures yeah. in Mill Creek or supporting our code enforcement officers. Right. Uh, additional funding yeah I think that's a great idea there uh, myself and uh, of course we know we're gonna give kudos uh, you know to Evan for uh, leading the charge on it as far as acquiring that property I know we had uh, received some public comment thinking why or asking why did we do such a thing there but we had a, a lien to preserve on that property it was a sizable lien uh, so we we're able to uh, purchase it at uh, sheriff sale or tax sale sheriff sale, sheriff sale I'm sorry and uh, got the property cleaned up it was a very Probably the worst blighted property I have ever seen in, in my career of code enforcement, and uh, got that demolished and cleaned up, and uh, property line dispute uh, taken care of, and now we're ready to get rid of the property. We're not in the business of owning property other than what we're on right now here. So, uh, but anyway, I think it's a great idea. So, you asking for a formal action on? Oh that, no, just, just for consideration. Just, just for consideration. Okay. okay. Okay, Brian. Any comment about that? Did you want to? Say? No, it's okay. it'll be great to uh, finally yeah. uh, see that property back on the tax rolls and yep. hopefully uh, developed uh, to good use. Right. Yeah, it's about 10 acres of parcel, I think, uh, 10 acres, that parcel is? It might be a little more than that at this yeah. point. Yeah, so uh, hopefully there's somebody that's interested in, in purchasing that and developing it, so. Okay, moving on to the uh, next item, item number 10, a request for approval of a, co a copier contract, copier service contract, that is, pardon me, and that's with Hagen Business Machines. Um, I think everything was pretty much self-explanatory on it. This, this is for the copier. That, is this the one we just bought, uh, Cheryl? Okay, so this is a, a maintenance agreement for it. Uh, and see, I know I had the, the pricing on there. Okay, all, okay. 
an all exclusive an all exclusive service contract billed quarterly to Hagen Business Machines for five years uh, for the actual copies and prints made. Rate for color is uh, five cents each, and rate for black and whites is 0.7 cents or seven cents, and for the first three years, and then uh, 0.776, 0.0776. Uh, and 0 0.052 for years four and five. So I think that's a pretty good price on that, Cheryl. Is that correct? Okay. Okay, I need a motion to approve that service contract. So moved. Okay, do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I vote yes. <clears throat> Item number 11, National Night Out Request. This comes from the Bell Valley Fire Department. Uh, which will be hosting the National Night Out, which is to be held on August the 2nd. And I think that's a Tuesday night. Is that correct? Tuesday night, August the 2nd? Does somebody know? Um, anyway, this comes from the Bell Valley Fire Department. Uh, as you are aware, the Bell Valley Fire Department will be hosting the Mill Creek Township National Night Out on August the 2nd. The event time is 6 p.m. until 9 at the, town, at the Bell Valley Fire Department. In order to help defray the cost of hosting this event, uh, the Bell Valley Fire Department is asking for a donation of $500 from Mill Creek Township uh, to cover the cost on that. If you have any questions, contact uh, Laura at, the, at a number enclosed on that. And that comes from Chris Altadonna, who is the fire chief at the Bell Valley Fire Department. So I'm going to put that in the form of a motion to uh, uh, give them a $500 to help defer the cost for that national night out. John, I have a, a quick question. Yes. I've, I'm sorry to say I've never attended the national oh, yeah. night out. Okay. But if you could maybe let us know what oh, yeah. they're, they're saying to fray the cost. <coughs> the cost I'm, I'm sorry, that. yes. Um, yeah, the national night out, uh, it's, it's a national movement, uh, and I think it's been going on five, six years now, maybe longer, um, in which uh, locations throughout different cities, municipalities, are a way for people to gather, uh, meet their neighbors, uh, uh, just you know, have good social uh, interaction with each other. Uh, maybe a chance to see the fire departments. Not all of, not all the locations are using fire departments, but that seems to be the locations are being used at uh, because of the, the larger size parking lots that are available there. So that's why this is being done here. This is the second year um, that uh, Val Valley has been hosting it. I think uh, Westlake uh, hosted it uh, maybe three or four years ago, if I'm, if I'm correct on that. So that's what it's all about. And hopefully folks, uh, those who are watching this, uh, will have, an, have a chance to stop by. It's from six until nine, and uh, you get to see some fire equipment. They have other things going on. Uh, I think maybe even a dunking booth. But, so this is different yeah. than a typical fire department open house? That's correct, yeah. This, this is, is not a national open, yeah, yeah, this is a national event there is what this is. So. Yeah, it's not to help out as far as their uh, uh, their open house. I think that's another day they have that, so if they even have one. So. Okay, uh, I'll. You know, was that a motion there? Yeah, I'll have that in the form of a motion. Uh, I'll second that, John. But I would like um, to hear from Bell Valley maybe afterward as to what type of attendance. Sure. They had. Um, okay. Not that five hundred dollars is a huge sum of money, but I would like to know. Okay. Just what it went to and how many. What people it went came, to and how yeah. many people actually okay. yeah. attended. <clears throat> and maybe uh, Chief Altadonna would be um, uh, would be a good idea if he coordinated perhaps in the future with other members of the department mm -hmm. who we also are receiving um, or we received communication from yesterday mm -hmm. um, uh, before they yes. send out before the communication that it's it's a little bit better I understand. coordinated. Yes. I understand yes. that. Uh, yeah. uh, they weren't all on the same page. That is correct, yes, yeah. We'll get that straightened out there. But yes, I will uh, agree with the, with the condition that you put on that there, so, yep. Okay. Hey, we have Chairman, a I, I, yes, you have a I, I would just add that um, I, I agree with Mr. McGrath. We should have a, a better understanding of um, what the costs of this event are. Mm -hmm. um, if they had an event last year, I, I would think they would, they would have had those costs and give us a report on, on attendance sure. before asking us for a donation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm hesitant to vote yes on this because I think it sets a, a precedent that um, we're going to start funding community events or neighborhood parties. Right. Um, and I, I guess I'm not, I, I'm just not clear from this letter how this is any different than a, a fire hall open house and I'm not sure what the $500 is going towards. So, okay. um, so I'll make that clear that I, I, I do think we should have, okay. they should have submitted a little more information to us okay. for this request. Okay. We do have a motion and a second on the floor mm -hmm. here. So I guess we can call for a vote on that then. So, mm -hmm. uh, 
Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote on it? I vote no. Okay, and I'll vote yes. Okay. okay. On the agenda here, we see items number 12 and 13. We are going to take number 13 first. Uh, Mr. Morris, this is the financial security reduction request by the hammocks at Mill Creek. Yes, we have a letter of credit in the amount of $76,983.41 that we're recommending a reduction to $14,250. It is held by PNC Bank, NA number 1811 zeros And we recommend that uh, this be reduced to $14,250. There are still some outstanding items remaining. And we have been keeping an accounting of all of the items that have been completed and we feel that the $14,250 is sufficient to handle the remaining items. Okay, any questions from the board? So this is a reduction you're talking about? Yes, okay. it's a reduction. Okay. I'll move approval. Okay, well here's second on that. I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Okay, now we'll go back to number 12 here. Uh, financial security release request. Uh, Mr. Morris, back to you again. Okay, for the first one, which is the hammocks, we have a different bank that is uh, handling the financial security, and that bank is Northwest, and it's in the amount of the $14,250, which it has just been reduced to, so we recommend release of the old letter of credit. Okay. What was the bank on that? Uh, I don't have that in front of me, Evan. You're, so you're, you're, you should. The request is that the original letter of credit issued by a different bank be released. Correct. In that they have tendered to your department the letter of credit for $14,250. Correct. Okay. That's, that's what you're asking? Yes. So we're not giving them their money back, it's just moving from one bank to another. I yeah. mean, that's all. Hand the new certificate. Right. Okay. Right, that's, that's the clarification. All right, I'll move approval. Okay, do I hear a second on that request? I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Okay. Mr. Morris, back to you again for the second item on that. The second one involves Waldemere Park. And the letter of credit is held by PNC Bank, number 1812244. Uh, dash double zeros dash triple zeros in the amount of five hundred twenty-three thousand eighty-three dollars and forty-seven cents. The developer has asked for a release, but we're recommending that the release be denied, and instead we reduce it to the ten percent amount of original for $52,310 since landscape areas in their parking lot have not been installed. Okay. Okay, any questions from the board on that? You say the landscape areas, does that include trees too? No, it doesn't because this was done before the new ordinance. Okay. So the large parking lot on the northwest corner of 6th and Peninsula has a lot of asphalt, but it's also supposed, also supposed to have, I believe, 32 landscaped areas. Now that could be rocks, it could be grass, it could be trees, shrubs, okay. but uh, the old ordinance really didn't specify other than 5% okay. of the paved area was okay. to be landscaped. I may, I may appear to be a little bit not with it here on this, but wasn't there an agreement or some sort of handshake that trees would be installed? There? Or am I uh, am we've I discussed wrong? that, and the property owner has placed trees along the Peninsula Drive right of way. Okay. He worked out an agreement with PennDOT. Yes, we are looking for trees yeah, within those areas. Yeah, that would be nice if trees were in there. So, right. Um, and right now, there's nothing but asphalt. Okay. Now, Mr. Morris, their land development plan didn't it show specifically where those landscaped areas would be going as yes. part of the land development plan? Yes. And did they specify what kind of landscaping they were going to no. be installing? 
guess I'll just make a comment. I hope that uh, trees are planted, you know, as part of that landscaping. And there is, or at least there was, hopefully there still is, uh, grant money available to do that. Yeah. Money should not be the, the reason why not. You know, there's grant money, as Brian said. Yep. So just for the record, I'd like to say that. So. All right. Anyway, I'll, I will move that the uh, letter of credit be reduced to fifty-two thousand three hundred and ten dollars. Okay. Do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Okay. Thank you on that. And <coughs> item number fourteen: sidewalk deferral agreement. Back to you again, Rick Morris. This is for a property at 2714 Loveland Avenue owned by Richard and Michelle Reeves. There are no sidewalks on their side of the street on Loveland Avenue. However, there is a sidewalk across the street. But in keeping with our policy, no sidewalks in that area on their side of the street, we're recommending approval of the sidewalk deferral agreement. Okay. So that is consistent with the policy? Correct. I understand That's that. what we've done in the past. Okay. Okay. I hear a motion on that. I'll or move approval. Okay. There a second on that. I'll second. Okay. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. <laughs> Item number 15. Back to you again, Rick Morris. Stormwater Management Maintenance Agreement request. And the first is for the residents of Gregory and Catherine to follow. Uh, this is a typical stormwater management maintenance agreement on the township approved form and even though it's a single family residence we still go through with this because it is over 5,000 square feet of impervious area and they agree to own and maintain this stormwater facility and we recommend approval of the agreement okay that's the one for Dufala is that right yes Dufala okay, Dufala. okay. Is there a motion to approve that so moved we hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. The second is for Pan World Development Incorporated to be located on the northwest corner of 12th and Seelinger. Okay. And once again, this underground system uh, will be owned and maintained by the developer. And he signed the township approved agreement. We recommend approval of that agreement. Do I hear a motion for that approval? So moved. Do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes on that. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Uh, item number 16, communications. Mark, do you have anything? No, nothing further. Okay. Brian? Uh, one thing from uh, Ashley Marsteller, our Parks and Rec Director. She would like to hire Rachel Cabany. Um, this would be as a substitute lifeguard at a rate of seven dollars and sixty sixty five cents per hour and I'll move approval of that okay do I hear a second on that hiring I'll second okay mr. McGrath how do you vote yes mr. Morgan how do you vote I vote yes and I also vote yes on that that's it that's all you have yep. okay I got a couple things uh, first one I'm this comes from me to uh, my fellow supervisors uh, requested time out of the office in my position as Administrator of Public <coughs> Safety, I ask for authorization to attend the monthly meeting of the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry Accessibility Advisory Board, which I am a member, meeting scheduled for July 21st in Harrisburg. As with all such requests, the travel and lodging costs are covered by the Commonwealth. So I put that in the form of a motion. Uh, I'll, I'll move approval. Oh, you, I'm sorry. Right. Sorry. Okay, do I hear a second on that there? I'll second. Okay, Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Uh, just quick comments here about something. Uh, first of all, uh, as folks may know, this is the week of motorcycles here in Erie, the region. Uh, we have the uh, Roar in the Shore, uh, the Bike Fest, which is going on right now at the Harley Davidson shop on West 12th Street. And also starting on uh, Thursday of this week is the Gears and Grub, which will be at the West Erie Plaza, uh, featuring local vendors, local food vendors that is. Uh, so if you get a chance, uh, please patronize all of these, uh, these events, if you will. Uh, everybody wins on this, the Roar. Uh, the money that they raise goes to the St. Martin Center this year. That's the recipient of, uh, of the funds. Uh, Bike Fest, uh, the American Red Cross is the winner on that one. Uh, Gears and Grub was a last-minute thing here in the last uh, month or so, and it's uh, 
It's actually going to turn out to be very good. They don't have any, any charities earmarked for this. This is kind of a put their toe in the water to see what they can do, and I think it's going to be a great event down there. So uh, anyway, please patronize all of these events if you can, uh, even if, if you may not ride a motorcycle or not. Uh, and importantly, please watch out for motorcycles, not only this time, all the times. I'm also one of them riders too, so uh, please be careful. Uh, the fireworks, I think, were a big hit. I think we've been getting a lot of good positive comments on that, and uh, we're just happy that uh, we could uh, put this together in such a very quick time, and uh, uh, it was very helpful. Uh, big hats, you know, hats off to everybody who was involved in it, especially the businesses that allowed uh, the viewers to go use their parking lots. This would not have been uh, possible without that. And, of course, the fireworks company, which is able to work a deal with us on that, and all of the support we gave from behind it. Uh, so uh, big hats off. And to the community, the taxpayers who, in, a, in essence, pay for it. It's about 30 cents a person, I think, is what it costs. Is that what came up? I think is what it figured well, out. It. Yeah. So. Well, and, and also, Matt, actually, our fire code. Oh, yes, yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. Matt was really the, the driving yeah, force driving, behind getting that organized the driving and force. pulling it yeah. off. Yeah, so that was very uh, kudos out to him and everybody else that's been involved in it. So, uh, And uh, let's see here. Uh, I just have one more thing. I'll wait till citizens to be heard, and I'll be under that one there. So that's all I have for right now. Uh, Mr. Morgan, do you have anything? Uh, yes, gentlemen, uh, it, it uh, saddens me to inform the board that we need to make an appointment to the Erie Metropolitan Planning Organization today. Uh, our longtime representative, uh, Mr. Thomas C. Hoffman, uh, passed away uh, this past July 3rd. Um, Tom uh, served the Erie community in, in several positions. Uh, better part of the last 40 years. Uh, he was executive director of the Home Builder Association, Northwest PA, executive director of the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Erie, executive director of the Metropolitan Erie Housing Development Corporation, uh, and executive director of the Erie Conference on Community Development, which was the, the predecessor organization to the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership. Uh, during his career, Tom also served as the chairman of the Metropolitan Planning Organization uh, for the better part of the last 30 years. Um, for the last 20 of those years, he served as our representative. Um, you know, Tom was uh, a tenacious advocate for our region. Uh, he, was, he was brash and he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to go out and, and cheerlead for our region and, and bring, up, bring resources to Erie County. Um, some of his accomplishments in, include uh, several transportation projects, uh, including the recent uh, I-90 and 19 interchange improvement. Yeah. The construction of the Bayfront Parkway, he was, a, he was a, a major force behind that project. Um, uh, on a personal note, uh, say I, I had the privilege of working for Mr. Hoffman for about 10 years with the MPO. Uh, he was a mentor to me. Uh, he always uh, encouraged and I'd, I'd say challenged the folks around him to do more and be more for their employers, uh, for their families, and for their community. And I'll, I'll, I feel uh, blessed to have uh, had Mr. Hoffman in my life. And I think our community is fortunate to have had him as our advocate. Um, he will be dearly missed. Um, with, with that, um, we need to make an appointment to fill his position. Okay. I would make a motion that we appoint our engineer, Mr. Rick Morris, uh, to be a voting representative, uh, and Sokol, our assistant township engineer, to be his alternate. Uh, I currently serve on the board, and I'd recommend appointing uh, Matt Walding, our land development coordinator, to be my alternate. Uh, okay. That's a form of a motion. Is that yes. Correct, John? Okay. I'll Here's second that. Okay. Okay. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote on that? I vote yes. Mr. McGrath? Yes. How do you vote? And I also vote yes there. Yeah, very kind words about uh, Mr. Hoffman, and yes, he will be missed. His wisdom was really something. He's nice. a good man. Yes. Anything else you have there, John? Um, that's all I have, but uh, Mr. Pierce, I believe, was going to cover our uh, planning commission report. Uh, we had a planning commission meeting uh, last week. Uh, one of the items on that agenda was a uh, proposed uh, zoning ordinance change to create uh, a new special exception category for adaptive uh, reuse of non-residential structures. Uh, Mr. Pierce then gave us a brief report on that agenda item from the planning commission. Yes, uh, like uh, Mr. Uh, Morgan had mentioned that July the 5th, the Planning Commission had at their meeting discussed the proposed uh, amendment to the zoning ordinance for adoptive reuse of non-residential structures. Uh, and in that is just for the residents to understand is that a, it was proposed as being a special exception which goes to the Zoning Hearing Board for public 
public comment and, and, it's, and it's heard through the, that board, not the supervisors or the planning commission. Uh, the Zoning Hearing Board is a quasi-judicial body that hears cases like this. Uh, there are roughly five different uses that are being proposed in there. Uh, special exception has specific requirements that must be met for the board to grant that special exception. And they can, it, with reasonable conditions, they can also put on the special exception granting. Uh, the board members uh, made it abundantly clear to the, to, the, uh, to the citizens that were there at the meeting that this wasn't just for schools in, in specifically Richfield and Vernondale. This was for the whole township. Uh, there have, there's roughly uh, 50 to 80 non-residential structures that are looked at as being, you know, prime for maybe this special exception, these special exceptions. Um, the board uh, had deliberated and we're, they had discussed at somewhat great length the hours of operation and uh, after some, after the deliberation they, they thought that the, the proposed hours were a great compromise of what had been discussed. Um, so that was what happened at the Planning Commission. Uh, the citizens that were heard, uh, most of them were kind of not really uh, aware of some of the things that were going on in the township and that, and once we're, they were made aware of it, they, were, they thought they were, this was a, a very good idea. Obviously, you're gonna have citizens that it's either gonna be a school or, or demolish it, one or the other, and some of these buildings are great for revamping like the, the township would like to do yeah. so that's that's my report okay mr pierce did they uh, move to recommend the language as, as it was presented then? that's correct yes um next step is for us to actually present it to the, the county for review is that correct that's correct yes okay do we have any indication or any like uh, estimate as to when the supervisors might hear this then I believe it would have to be in like maybe the, the earliest we could probably hear or the board could hear it would be like August the 5th. I think that's your first meeting in August. Okay. Yeah. That'll be the soonest. Okay. okay. What is August the 5th? Well, on it. Um, ninth. The ninth August ninth? Go close. Yeah. yeah. Ninth, yes. It would sort of right. depend. Did the draft of what the planning commission looked at? go to the county planning department before the planning commission met? As, as far as I know, not as of yet. Well, to, I mean, to meet the full 30, 30 days, days. Yeah. the sooner we get it out, the sooner the 30 Correct. days stops, starts. I think I think you're really looking for the 23rd. The evening meeting. The evening meeting. That's, yeah. that's more likely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's probably a better thing anyways. Right. Yeah. Well, then, Chuck, <coughs> if you would uh, coordinate with Evan to get that language to the county to start their 30-day review process. And then we'll okay. also advertise our public hearing uh, for the August 23rd meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank Evan. you, Chuck. Yep. Thank you, You're Chuck welcome. and John, both of you, and Evan, for getting all that together. You have anything else, John? That's all I have. Mr. Adair, do you have anything? I don't have anything. <laughs> okay, Cheryl, you'll have something, I believe. Mm -hmm. During the month of June, we received five right to know requests. Um, three were granted. Uh, one was listed as pending, but it has since been granted as of yesterday. And there was one partial denial. And when we partially deny a record, a lot of times, or a request, a lot of times it's because other records that they are asking for just do not exist. Yeah. And by law, we have to do that. Uh, a total of 11 hours were spent preparing these responses. Um, and due to technology, we can email responses now when requested, so that saves a lot of funds on, on both ends. Okay. Okay, thank you for that report. Anything else you have, Cheryl? Nothing else? Okay. Rick Mr. Morris? Oh. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I did overlook something. Oh, okay, yeah. We'll go back uh, to you. In yeah. wrapping up the uh, uh, Water Authority's affairs, mm -hmm. 
uh, it was necessary to close out certain accounts that uh, the Water Authority had at First National Bank. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then, for convenience sake, we just opened new accounts at the same bank. Mm -hmm. uh, one was the proceeds account, the sale proceeds account, mm -hmm. which will ultimately be invested uh, once we do our RFP or some <laughs> by the end of the month. Yeah. And the other one was there was an operating account uh, that the Water Authority had. Uh, that had money in it and uh, in order for their books to be closed and for those assets to be transferred to us, yeah. uh, it was cleanest to close their account and move <laughs> money into a new account, which we also put at uh, First National Bank for convenience sake. So uh, I'm asking that uh, you approve the uh, opening of those two accounts at First National Bank. Okay. Okay. So you need that in form of a motion. Do I hear yes. a motion on I'll that? I'll move approval. Okay. Do I hear a second on that? I'll second. Okay, we need public comments since that was not on the agenda. Oh, it is on the agenda. Oh, did, oh I'm yes. sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I missed <laughs> over it there. Okay, um, we, we have a motion and a second there. Mr. McGrath, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Morgan, how do you vote? I vote yes. And I also vote yes. Okay, thanks, Mark. Okay, Rick Morris, anything? Nothing. Mr. Pierce, anything? Nothing. Okay, citizens to be heard. No citizens to be heard? Okay. Uh, we'll adjourn the meeting here at 1016. Thank you. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.